According to the Centers for Disease Control, approximately 8 million people in the U.S. have peripheral artery disease. Here to talk about a new advanced treatment option for individuals suffering with this disease is interventional cardiologist with Baptist Heart and Vascular Institute, Dr. Safwan Jaluk. Good morning, Dr. Jaluk. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Well, first things first, we want to know a little bit about you. Tell us how you became an interventional cardiologist, and I'm so glad that I was able to actually pronounce that, because that doesn't always happen. <laughs> Tell us your story. So, um, just interventional cardiologists are essentially a, a heart specialist who receive additional training and uh, um, education for treating patient uh, through catheter-based procedure, like angioplasty or stenting. Um, this is minimally invasive non-surgical procedures. It allows patients to return to work and to their family quickly with minimal interruption. Well, how did you end up becoming an interventional car? Just uh, it sounded interesting <laughs> to you? Or? It sounded interesting. I had interest uh, a <laughs> long time ago to become a cardiologist. and. Um, uh, been in this area for practicing cardiologists for the last 19 years. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Thank you. I mean, of course, heart problems seem to be a very common thing, so it sounds like you're kind of in the right field, I mean, to kind of be involved in, in um, some up-and-coming procedures, which is actually what you're here to talk about, um, peripheral artery disease. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the causes, and, and how common is it? It's very common. It's the most common circulatory problem, and it affects more the elderly, but you know we've been seeing more and more patients uh, in their 40s and 50 with the disease. Um, so essentially, um, it happens when blockages develop inside the arteries that uh, restricting the blood flow to the to the legs, and so the patient will start complaining of discomfort in their legs when they ambulate, and uh, in worse cases you might see non-healing ulcers for months or years or even amputation. Um, it, is a, it could be a, a, a sign of actually a bigger problem, which is developing blockages inside the heart and inside the brain. Mm -hmm. And those will lead to heart attack and strokes. So that's why you know, uh, coming to see us early on sometimes allow us to treat those conditions. When you talked about coming early on, I mean, I don't think we could ever undervalue that at all because sometimes there are things that happen, you kind of shove them off as, oh, well, maybe I'm just a little stressed today. But of course, it'd be, it's important for you to go in and get everything checked just to be on the safe side. Absolutely. And we, we, we talk many times on, on the treatment of those uh, conditions, but more importantly, uh, to, to understand the prevention because mm -hmm. uh, heart disease and peripheral vascular disease, they're all interrelated. And they are uh, preve mostly preventable conditions. Uh, they, they're caused by uh, uh, mostly what we call risk factors, like diabetes, smoking, high blood pressure, elevated uh, cholesterol. And the, all these factors that lead to the development of these diseases mm -hmm. can be controlled mm -hmm. if, uh, if, if the patient uh, 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 seeks medical attention early on, so thereby, uh, therefore preventing these diseases from happening. And speaking of prevention, um, there's a new procedure called the Diamondback something procedure, and you're going to have to help me pronounce <laughs> that word, um, that helps with peripheral artery disease. Tell us about that. So uh, th this is a, a Diamondback atherectomy procedure that we're very excited uh, about, and uh, we have it at Baptist uh, uh, to treat these patients. It's mostly more uh, on the treatment uh, uh, aspect rather than prevention. So it, we end up, unfortunately, many times seeing patients at the later stage of their disease mm -hmm. uh, when they start developing problems. And uh, uh, we're facing uh, with the uh, need to reestablish blood flow back to the, to the organ involved. Um, so uh, the blockages when they develop in the heart or the legs or other arteries in, in, in the body, they're two kinds. They're the soft kind, soft plaque. And there's the heart kind, uh, essentially the heart plaque, that mostly uh, uh, consists of uh, calcium deposit. Mm. And if you think about calcium, it's like rocks. It's like a very hard consistency. Now, we can easily treat patients with soft plaque. You know, we can essentially uh, be able to 
treat those lesions easily. Whereas the hard plaque, sometimes it's very hard for us to, 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 to remove those hard plaque from inside the arteries. So the, the, the new catheter, or a diamond back atherectomy catheter, I can show it here on the screen, allow us to treat those patients uh, essentially very effectively and um, you know, uh, allow us to treat more and more patients uh, through a non-surgical, minimally invasive approach. And we do have a video that we're, we're showing to kind of give an example of how this works because I'm looking at this and I'm like, what's going on here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me explain to you how it works. That's we have uh, animation. So we introduce the catheter uh, through the groin or the wrist and advance it all the way to the vessel that's involved. Uh, and you can see here the hard plaque, the calcified plaque, it's, uh, it's deposited along the artery wall. So the catheter works by spinning and essentially sending off those plaque from the vessel wall, uh, leaving the healthy vessels uh, alone. Uh, you can see as it, as it rotates, it starts uh, removing, shaving those plaque off. Wow. And then um, after that, we'll be able to deliver generally stent, which is the most common thing we do uh, to, uh, to keep the vessel open. If you think about it, uh, those uh, small uh, particulate uh, downstream, and now you can see the stent at the end being deployed in the vessel to keep the vessel open. So the principle of it, it's um, like when the man shaved their shin, chin and, 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 and beard, the, the, the hard bl blade will cut through the, 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 the hair, but will not affect the soft skin. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same uh, uh, principle. They call it dif differential uh, sanding, essentially, if the vessel uh, applies to this procedure. Well, what are some of the warning signs pr for peripheral artery disease that maybe this procedure is something that someone's going to need? So uh, if the patient develops uh, uh, discomfort in their legs and mostly in the calf re region when they ambulate, that might be a sign that uh, he might have significant uh, peripheral vascular disease. Now we encourage the patient to continue to ambulate and stay active and uh, maintain healthy lifestyle. But if it gets to the point that they're unable to perform their uh, uh, daily activity, then it's time for them to uh, seek medical attention. Similarly, if they have an ulcer uh, in their feet uh, that are, that's not healing and it's been going on for weeks and months, uh, certainly that will be another sign of uh, maybe a serious underlying problem. Um, as far as the heart's concerned, many times they come in when the blockage develops inside the vessel walls of the, of the heart arteries, then they start developing discomfort in their chest. And they have, you know, whenever they do any activity, they feel pressure sensation in their chest. So uh, originally, uh, diamond back atherectomy was studied in the patients with peripheral vascular disease. And then more and more study came out that showing equivalent benefit and patients with coronary artery disease as well. So FDA has uh, recently approved the catheter to be used in, in, in cardiac patient. And uh, you know, Baptist is the only uh, institution in this region that uh, have this technology. Wow. So it's, it's great that we'll be able to uh, provide this uh, technology uh, to our patient here locally instead of them traveling to other places. Well, and of course, this is such great information and maybe a little bit overwhelming. It seems like there's a lot to learn. What are some resources? How can our viewers reach out if they want some more information about this disease and, and the procedure? Uh, certainly, uh, internet is the, it's filled <laughs> <laughs> with information that they can, they can uh, uh, try to search. Um, or they can uh, you know, go to uh, uh, Baptist, ebaptisthealthcare.org. Uh, to kind of uh, get a little bit more information about this procedure or ask their primary care physician or about it. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate this information. I'm sure we've learned a lot. And thank you for bringing that video. We always love visuals. <laughs> thank <laughs> thank you. you so much, Dr. Jaluk. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much.